Since these videos are not scripted in any way, um, or really very planned out, I do spend a lot of time in meditation thinking about what needs to be said and how to say it, but there are things in pretty much every video I've ever made um, that I always forget to say. And usually I figure it doesn't really matter because each one of these is just sort of a moment in time. This is what there was in that moment. But sometimes there are things that are really important that I neglected to say. And that's the case of the last video uh, about Tiferet. There's two issues. Number one is the Akasha, and number two is incarnation, okay? So, number one, <clears throat> I neglected to mention um, that in the path of Heth, uh, path of cancer, between, <clears throat> here we go, let's get the uh, uh, directions right here, between Bina and Tiferet, this connection, the, the birth canal of the temporal realm, where that awareness shifts from the non-sequential eternal perspective to the sequential temporal experience. That shift in there from undifferentiated to differentiated that is the Akasha. It's a region of that transition between the greater selves and the individual selves, the, the solitary selves, where it makes that transition from one state to the other is the Akasha, which in Barden terms would be the mental ether and the, um, this is <clears throat> that zone where you project your volt, that intense uh, condensation of will, you project it into that region of the Akasha with a big A, and it automatically materializes it. it goes through those stages of a mental astral and physical materialization and incarnation because what you're doing is your focused will uh, <clears throat> interacts with all of the essential meanings that are, are shifting from undifferentiated to differentiated and it attracts to it, that, that focused will attracts to it the relevant essential meanings that are themselves seeking expression through materialization. And so your desire manifests, okay? That's why a volt works, or how a volt works. <clears throat> So, the Akasha is in that path of Heth, that transitory state where the change is infinite. The inevitabilities are infinite in number in that zone. <clears throat> so, that's the Akasha. Second thing about Tiferet that's rather important is that it is the solitary self who incarnates into, you know, takes on an astral and physical form. And then when that form perishes, as all forms do, Every form is temporary here in the temporal realm, okay? So, that form is temporary that it manifests through, and then it retreats back to the solitary self that is your awareness. 
not your personality. Your personality tends to change from incarnation to incarnation, but your individual self, that thing that makes you who you really are, remains much the same. And that's the solitary self. That is where uh, the goal is for your awareness to be seated in your solitary self, that core essence of who you are, as opposed to seated where it is normally in the personal self, the personality, that self that reacts. Okay, so it is the individual self that incarnates and disincarnates and incarnates and disincarnates over and over. <clears throat> it's always the same self. You know, that's uh, so many fantasies around reincarnation. Oh, I was Cleopatra. Um, <laughs> Most human beings have incarnated as peasants, <laughs> as nobodies. I mean, that is the vast portion of human population is insignificant nobodies. You know, we're not all born as, you know, these important figures in history. There just haven't been that many compared to the number of human beings that there have been, okay? So, you weren't necessarily ever reincarnated as somebody important, as a king or a queen or, you know, a billionaire or, you know... No, <clears throat> you're... We're all born as ordinary people over and over again. But it's always, it's always been me incarnating in all these different bodies. The only thing that changes is the forms, the astrophysical forms. They come and they go. The scenery is different in each lifetime, but I'm always me in every lifetime. I've never been a king. <laughs> I've never been royalty. <clears throat> I've been scholars. I've been uh, clergy. I've been... Uh, Mostly a whole bunch of nobodies, but always a human being, you know? Always trying to be the best human being I can be, uh, but never anybody of great importance. Just me, right? <clears throat> me that is just a little tiniest little flicker of the eye. This particular grouping of essential meanings in this particular ratio, that's what I am. And, you know, <clears throat> I'll try to do the best job of being that as I possibly can. No matter what form that takes, we, we can't be so obsessed with the momentary form that we inhabit. Because this is transitory. This is over in a blink of an eye. You know, time is infinite. <laughs> and our lifetimes are <clears throat> so fleeting and so unimportant. Those are not what is important. What's important is that little tiny flicker of the eye, that specific combination of essential meanings 
in this little ratio that I manifest, and that I express as part of the I. Okay. So that brings us to the subject of this video this time is that of Gedjula or mercy. Gedjula translates as mercy, which is an interesting word that you should think about for a minute. Another title of uh, this static state of awareness is Chesed, which means loving kindness. So that's the sort of mercy we're talking about here. Mercy is all about affinity. And that sense of caring, of participating in the whole for the benefit of the whole, for the benefit of everybody, regardless of who or what it is. And that is <clears throat> where <clears throat> consciousness goes in its process of self-realization, where it goes next from <clears throat> Tifret, where it goes next, is to Gedjula, the realization, self-realizing of all of those individuals in the context of other, self and other, is that, uh, number one, we're all made of the same thing. We're all essential meanings, groupings of essential meanings that are, I mean, we're, we're so similar in how we are con constituted, of what makes us uh, solitary selves is our own unique blend of essential meaning. And the other around us is fundamentally the same, but we see similarities within those differences. And <clears throat> consciousness, especially here in the pillar of mercy, the pillar of force, <clears throat> Consciousness wants to coalesce. Okay, it wants to find similar things to itself. So here we have the beginnings of the mental realm. And the fundamental rule, law, of the mental realm is like attracts like. That is the essence of mercy, of compassion, of loving kindness. We're all in it together. And this is how we are united. Here we have in Gajula all the collective awarenesses, the collective awareness of all human individual selves, of all the solitary selves that incarnate as human beings, there is here in Gedjula a grand collective awareness. There's collective awarenesses of every kind of thing that manifests in the temporal present moment. Everything that manifests there is a collective awareness of those things. There's a collective awareness of all brown, big brown chairs. You know, it's, 
is that infinite in its variety? <clears throat> because there is an individual self behind this manifestation, just as there is an individual self behind this manifestation. We all exist in Tiferet together. And in Gajula, we find those affinities. We see those affinities. They become powerful things. And this sets up something about the universe, that benign self-care. The universe takes care of itself. Every part supports every other part, supports it in its expression of itself. Okay? So it has this benign effect. It feels benign. The universe provides for every, every solitary self exactly what it needs in its self-realization in the ultimate expression of its essential meaning through its manifestation everything it needs is provided <clears throat> so that's where we really experience divine providence the divine provider uh, is here in Gajula. Loving kindness. Now the paths <clears throat> that create the static state of uh, awareness that inform this static state of awareness, the very first of them is a path, the very first hidden path that we encounter from Kether, Crown, to Gajula, Mercy, okay? Now this is... This is the eye touching this awareness and, and blessing it, as it were, filling it with its, uh, its essence, with the Catholic brilliance. This is filled with that brilliance of the eye with the brilliance of the whole I, not just each thread of essential meaning that is the body of the I, but with the I's own direct awareness fills this this infinite mixture of uh, solitary selves that manifest and express the whole infinite body of essential meanings that are the I. It's all right here in Gajula. That is the first hidden path. <clears throat> that blessing of the eye. That direct intervention, as it were. The direct presence of the eye 
in that it is the, the power of the divine providence, the divine provider, right there in Yajula. Now, <clears throat> <clears throat> the second path comes from Hokma, wisdom, essential meaning, the unity of parts, down directly, vertically, into Gedula, mercy, loving kindness. Uh, the affinity of all things via the path of Gimel. Gimel is the camel. This is Jupiter, planetary Jupiter, the benign Jupiter. Jupiter is the great benefic. It, it affords a blessing. You know, this is the path of all that essential meaning coming down into a Gedula where it is beginning to manifest and manifesting at the mental level. This is the mental plane, the birth of the mental plane in Gedula. And that all comes down via Jupiter. Now, <clears throat> this is also associated with uh, the practice of magical evocation, this path. From Chokma to Gajula. And <clears throat> this is the birth of all the symbols of essential meaning. This essential meaning is beginning to take form in symbols here in Gedula through this path of Jupiter. That is what happens as essential meaning descends into the mental realm. It takes on symbolic form. Now, the third path into Gedula is the path of Leo, the path of Teth, that comes from Tiferet into Gedula. Now, this echoes the path of He from Kether to Hakma. This is the same dynamic from Tiferet to Gajula, from the solitary selves to that realm of a likeness, that coalescing of awarenesses, the grouping of awarenesses. <clears throat> and here is the path of Leo, which is attributed to the sun. The sun rules Leo. It is the only zodiacal sign ruled by the sun, just as Heth was the only zodiacal sign ruled by the moon, okay? So, this is the light of the solitary self, the light of the individual. So the individual passes along here in its clearest, its strongest statement of itself. It expresses itself in that Leonine sort of way. This is Leo, you know, the proud lion who roars and states 
itself within the collective. It announces itself with pride in the collective through the path of uh, death, path of Leo. Okay? And the death <clears throat> is described as a basket that holds something or as the snake coiled. Okay? <clears throat> so, <clears throat> that completes Gedula, where the solitary selves as a whole realize that they are unique but collectivized. You know, they're joined together in, excuse me, joined together in a great uh, communion. Um, uh, a great community of individual selves giving birth to the fabric of the temporal universe here at the beginning of the mental realm. Next time, we'll talk about that other pole, Gebura severity, or paha, fear, okay? But that's for tomorrow, and next time. <laughs> okay, that's it for today. Thank you. Bye-bye.